southeast heading northeast, the path to Apocalypse. December 20, 2003, 200 Boko Haram members attacked police stations in Gedam and Kanama, Yobe State. That was the infancy. They killed police officers, took their guns, and freed detainees. Some shared in June 2004, Boko Haram's tried to break into jail in Damatru. In October 2004, Boko Haram attacked a convoy of 60 policemen and took, and took 12 of them hostage. As they dispersed evil, their, fellow, their, their, follow, their followership and, and perhaps popularity amongst some, some folks soared. So, by 2005, the governor of Yobe appointed a non-Boko Haram devotee to his cabinet. Buju Foy became commissioner for religious affairs. It is a familiar part, the dalliance with groups fitting with an insurgency. Cowardly state government plays opportunism above all else, and alterations sparked by crash helmets would lead soldiers to shoot to to kill to kill the to kill the tomb trumps of the of the building insurgency. Boko Haram lost members and went feral. By 2010, they had deployed teeth and an appetite for blood. They stormed Bauchi prisons, killed soldiers and policemen, and freed 700 inmates. We lack WhatsApp and Twitter information, dissemination, pornographic propens propensities then. But the Oweri prison drama is familiar. By 2011, Jonathan had settled in and the insurgency audacity seemed to grow. Opponents of Jonathan in the north mocked and snared. They gave the insurgent troops up with their, with their ambivalence. Boko Haram's proselytize they said the people were impoverished because the government was corrupt, run by infidels. Emir's northern allies took solace in Bakumi. The insurgents killed Pusi local descendants. They killed Ibrahim Bakodi, a cleric who didn't mind ways like the others. They must have considered him and and if, if level, they destroyed churches, but didn't spare three Taurus three three mocks. They attacked the police headquarters in Abuja. A few times, they visited the market in Maiduguri and looted shops to the silent praise of a mob of cheerleaders. The insurgent later bombed the United Nations building before the Venice ransack the Northeast, we could have leashed or suffocated them. Before they became a scourge, we could have united our scorn and last at them with one voice. But we didn't. We, 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 we cuddled them into its idiocy lunacy. The owners of the land were befooled by ignorance, politics, and mackish sentimentally. Cheers rat went the inferno sprouted. Today, President Jonathan eats bang bagan soup and fresh fish in Otoeke, but many ostriches are peers round Abuja, craning their necks like, like lost pigeons. Sometime during that during that forgettable period, we paid 100 million because an angry policeman shot Yusuf the Boko Haram leader dead. We said it was it was extrajudicial murder. We appeased his family. Fear made us hide behind the rule of law. We have since learned to 
to, to produce the houses of small scale kidnappers while we cuddle Yusuf family. Nobody appears the families of the soldiers and policemen whom Boko Haram and Yusuf killed. That, rem that reminds me, despite all the murder murders and abomination committed by this group, we said Yusuf was not violent. I once watched the Sultan lecture a visiting president, a visiting president Jonathan. Jonathan didn't have the, the aura of a lion king. The Sultan said the insurgency didn't require military high mindedness. His recipe was, was palliatives, the shot of bam we, we applied on the Niger Delta. Lamido Sanusi brought out data and said that the Northeast was receiving peanut from the Federation. The Northern, it, the Northern Intelligentsia, Hitato, known for outspoken, outspokenness, spared the youth and lashed Jonathan and the country with their tongues. I'm not a fan of Jonathan. The bull stopped at his table. But if only the northern elite had, had looked down the road and take normal responsibility. Those chickens have since come home to, to roost. General Ihe Jireka, who was accused of evening Biafra with his fairness against the insurgent, has retired to his family. Those who, those who verified him are licking their wounds. Those saw was master tatize our north eastern limbs is 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 gang is gangronous. They pampered the saw. We should have seen it coming. Boko Haram robbed banks and destroyed policemen. Now to contribute to this news. The insurgent we are talking about actually started even before the former president Olusegun Obasanjo came into power. I think what we are reading in this article is trying to remember the history of how they came on board. Well, it's very good. But what we are saying today is that if the, if it is tackled on time and the people involved are being jailed and, and, and face the wrath of the law, it will not have escalated what you are seeing today. But it was because the, 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 the present president formed the organization, they the, the bring Islam into it, they did not allow the soldiers or the police sent there to do their work. But today it has escalated into what Nigerian government could not control. But right now, as if that is not enough, now they are sending soldiers to, to Southeast in order to, 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 to do what? Is it to arrest Fulani headsmen that are disturbing them or to, or to arrest the ESM that are keeping their land from Fulani men from entering? We don't know what they are going there to do. Now, it is clear that all the activities taking place in the Northeast were done by the, by, by, by the president and his people. It is the Northern that sent those people into the Southeast to destroy the land. And at the same time, when the Southeast people were trying to defend, they begin to arrest the Southeast people. You see what the government of President Mohammed Bari is doing, but we, we believe that 100 years is not, is not forever. A time is coming that he will leave the throne, and then the story will begin to tell on him.